Right, so today's lecture is going to deal with cancer. And again, we are interested in cancer because cancer is the second leading cause of death in the United States. It's second only to heart disease. We discussed in the previous lecture. Now, cancer really is abnormal and uncontrolled cellular growth. So abnormal, uncontrolled cell growth. And this, this abnormal, uncontrolled cell growth leads towards a mass called a tumor. So it forms a tumor. Now, that tumor can be benign. And that means that it's a tumor that is not a cancerous tumor. So there's no cells that have been modified into cancer-causing cells, and they don't spread. So no cancer, and there's no spread. The tumor that's cancerous is called malignant. Malignant tumor causes cancer, and the cells can break off and they can spread throughout the organism. And that's what you're seeing here is the development of a tumor. On this side, we have one cell that goes through genetic modification and becomes a cancer-causing cell. It loses its regulation of the cell cycle and begins to go through that abnormal and uncontrolled cell gro growth to form a uh, tumor. That tumor further progresses, and eventually that tumor is large enough and inundated with cancer, and it begins to work its way down towards blood vessels and lymphatics until eventually those cells begin to make their way into the blood vessels and then those cancer cells begin to circulate to other locations. So a malignant tumor is often referred to a neoplasm, a new growth. And when the Neoplasm or that malignant tumor begins to make its way into the blood vessels or into the lymphatic vessels, it becomes a metastasis. So it begins to metastasize. And this is just simply a term that we use to describe a cancer that's spreading to new regions, new organs, and tissues within the body. Again, the spread is typically due to transported blood vessels, cells, cancerous cells being transported in the lymphatic system with the lymphatic vessels. Now, these tumors that develop through metastases are called secondary tumors. Also referred to as metastases. So, what are the major risks associated, the major risk factors associated with development of cancer? And the answer is that each type of cancer. its own risks. So there's no universal set of risk factors for all types of cancer. Uh, you can see, though, that there are some commonalities. And again, we're seeing two of the, two of the common culprits in tobacco use and inactivity. Sedentary lifestyle. Uh, Diet and obesity are actually causes of sedentary lifestyle. So what's common to many is tobacco use, unhealthy diet, physical activity leading to obesity. A 
another risk factor is exposure to a class of chemicals called carcinogens. These are substances that we know can cause cancer. And there's a variety of different types of substances that can lead towards cancer or the progression of cancer. What I'd like to do now is to just expose you to some of the most common types of cancer and sort of give you a playlist of the common types of cancer that we experience here in the United States. The number one leading cancer is the leading cause of cancer-related death is going to be lung cancer. And the number one biggest risk for lung cancer is smoke. Now, lung cancer does have a pretty apparent symptomology. The symptoms of lung cancer may include persistent cough, chest pain, and treatments. for lung cancer are going to be a combination of surgery radiation therapy and chemotherapy and these treatments are just to try to put the lung cancer at bay and they're really not that effective one of the statistics that we look to for treatment effectiveness is the five-year survival rate. And a five-year survival rate is a percentage of the population with this specific type of cancer, in this case, lung cancer, and how many, how many of those individuals survive for five years. For lung cancer, it's only 15%. Second uh, most common cancer is colorectal cancer. So colon and rectal cancers. Second leading cause of cancer deaths in the United States. Some of the symptoms that we have here for colon and rectal cancers are going to include rectal bleeding, and changes in follow habits. There are tests for colon cancer, or for colon and rectal cancers, preventative screening. They include stool blood tests, series of endoscopy tests, including sigmoidoscopy, and colonoscopy. And these two tests are using fiber optic cameras to be inserted through the anal opening into the sigmoid portion of the colon and then into uh, further reaches uh, uh, proximal, po proximally up the, the colon and you're just inspecting looking for uh, polyps or other cancerous growths. Once detected, the treatment for colon and rectal cancers primarily is going to be a surgical intervention.
problems with surgery is our primary method of treatment. Still a pretty deadly cancer. Our five-year survival rate statistic for this cancer, marginally better than lung cancer at 25%. Our most common cancer in women is breast cancer. So it's the most common form of cancer in women, and it's the second leading cause of death in women behind lung cancer. The symptoms. Cancer, uh, breast cancer include a lump in the breast tissue. Testing and detection uh, are going to include a mammogram, a breast exam, which can also be administered as a self breast exam. And then also tissue biopsy. The treatment strategy for breast cancer include surgery and chemotherapy. Now, breast cancer is the second leading cause of death in women. However, the five-year statistic is 77%. Now, the reason that it's second leading cause is because even though there's a very high survival rate, there are a large number of cases of breast cancer. And so just looking at the raw numbers, the number of deaths from breast cancer it's as a percentage of the total population, it's very high because of a high incidence rate of the disease. The next cancer that I'd like to talk about is prostate cancer. This is a male specific cancer, it is the most common form of cancer in men. And again, second to lung cancer, death rate. The symptoms for prostate cancer are very limited, and it may include things like difficulty expressing urine. Really, it's going to be detected primarily by testing. And men will be tested, especially after the age of 50, with routine rectal exams. And then using a PSA, this is a, a prostate antigen, it shows up in the blood, assay from the blood. So we use a PSA blood test, and then also a tissue biopsy to detect this particular disease. The treatment strategy for prostate cancer will include surgery and radiation, radioactive seed treatment, placing radioactive seeds directly into the prostate. Now, even though it's second leading cause of death, very similar here um, to breast cancer, we have just a high number of incidents, which makes it uh, the uh, second most common form of cancer death. However, there's a large number of individuals that have uh, prostate cancer, and the five year survival rate for this cancer is about 81%. The next type of cancer, again, a female specific cancer here, it's cervical cancer. And cervical cancer is caused 
primarily by STIs. These are sexually transmitted infections, and in particular, the human papillomavirus, which is the virus that causes genital warts. Testing for uh, cervical cancer includes a pap test, or what's known as a pap smear, where the cells of the cervix, cervix are scraped and they're plated on a microscope plate, a uh, microscope slide that means viewed microscopically. So you can look for abnormal uh, appearance of those cells that are scraped from the cervix. The treatment strategy for cervical cancer is to remove the abnormal cells. If those abnormal cells appear to be progressing, it's from the malignancy. So hopefully we can detect this early before cancer begins to develop before we begin to see malignancy and then we can just remove those cells. Five-year survival rate for this particular cancer is at 68% per Another female-specific cancer is endometrial cancer. Endometrial lining is the lining of the uterus. Endometrial cancer has similar risks to breast cancer. One of the biggest risks here is overexposure to estrogen. This is also true of breast cancer as well. And one of the most common ways that women today are overexposed to estrogen is through use of uh, hormone, hormone birth control. So what we call the birth control pill. Testing for endometrial cancer includes a pelvic exam. Once identified, the treatment strategy for this cancer going to include surgery and either radiation alongside that surgery or chemotherapy alongside that surgical intervention. Now endometrial cancer is actually has good prognosis right now the five-year survival rate it's about 96%. Ovarian cancer, another female cancer. Uh, again, very similar risks is already identified for breast cancer and endometrial cancer. Again, overexposure here to estrogen, including birth control pills. It's going to be a major risk. Symptoms here are limited. So that means that we have to detect this with screening. There are some screening tests for ovarian cancer, and then the treatment strategy surgery. It's typical surgical removal of the ovary or a portion of the ovary. The five-year survival rate is at 27 percent, which seems ultra low, and it is, but one of the reasons is because there's a low rate of detection. It's not as a detectable cancer as other cancers that have a, a better symptomology or a more pronounced symptomology. And so because of that, we actually have some issues with survival rate, ovarian cancer. Uh, 
skin is a very common place for cancer. And there is a variety of different types of skin cancers, and many of them are highly curable. And there's a couple reasons that they're highly curable. The risks include ultraviolet exposure, including UV light from the sun. And it's both types of UV light, UVA and UVB rays. Again, as I previously said, there are many different types or many different forms of skin cancer. A couple examples that are pretty common are basal cell carcinoma. And this is a cancer that forms in the very deepest skin layer. Second type is squamous cell carcinoma. Which is a cancer in the surface of the skin, on the surface of the skin. And then the third type that I'm going to mention is melanoma. Melanoma is a type of cancer where we have development out of a malignant tumor in our melanocytes or the pigment cells of the skin. They may look something like a mole as the as the tumor develops. Well, one of the reasons that skin cancer is highly curable is because it's very evident when skin cancer begins to develop. And there's a couple different techniques. One of them, a very easy technique to use, called the ABCD test. The ABCD test is a way for you to evaluate moles or suspicious spots on your skin to look at their asymmetry is one half unlike the other or to look for border irregularities does it have an uneven scalloped edge rather than a clearly defined border uh, maybe the mole has color variation is it a uniform color or does it vary from one area to the other like you can see here uh, and then also just the total diameter so there's our abc's if the diameter is larger than a quarter of an inch which is about the size of a pencil eraser then you may want to have that will inspect it by your physician. So with skin cancers, prevention is key. And some ways to avoid skin cancer, or to prevent skin cancer rather, is to avoid excessive UV exposure. That includes both sunlight and artificial light. So both UV light that's produced in tanning salons or in a tanning bed. Two more types of cancer to, to, to mention as we close this lecture out. Testicular cancer, obviously a male cancer. It's very rare overall, but we're going to take time to mention this cancer because of the population that it affects. This is actually a young man's cancer, which is very rare. Most cancers are actually associated with individuals who are older, although that trend is getting to change as cancer uh, begins to be detected in younger and younger individuals. In particular, testicular cancer, it's rare overall, but it's actually the most common form of cancer in 
college-aged males, and males who are really 20 to 35 years of age. The last type of cancer I'm going to mention is pancreatic cancer. And this is notable because pancreatic cancer is actually the deadliest form of cancer. Pancreatic cancer has a five-year survival rate of just approximately 1%. So just really briefly, something that we hit on early in this lecture was the role of DNA in cancer. And I want to just make two notes here on DNA or on your genetics and on cancer. So as you're all aware, your DNA is held within the nucleus of the cell. And the DNA is programmed to provide proteins that, that uh, provide beneficial physiological function. The genes in the DNA will occasionally mutate, and that just simply means to change. Now, frequently, the changes that occur don't even really cause any changes in physiology. Right? So they don't cause development of any sort of disease condition, including cancer. But occasionally, those mutations will occur, and they will begin to disrupt normal cell function. When the gene mutates and becomes a cancer-causing gene, we call that particular gene that mutated gene the Hopka gene. And there are many different factors. We talked about physical inactivity and smoking, obesity, poor diet, that can lead towards inducing a normal gene to mutate into an oncogene. Now, once that oncogene forms, that oncogene begins to change the physiology and will begin to promote tissue transformation. And we get a new set of proteins that begin to uh, be developed in the cell and we begin to have the abnormal physiological functions such as producing abnormal cell growth and tumors. So just to leave you some good news. What are the main prevention strategies for cancer? The big one is exercise and physical activity. It's also going to be very important to avoid smoking. Important to have a balanced diet. And then lastly, one of the keys to prevention is to undergo routine screening. Make sure you're going in for your yearly physical and you are getting those age-appropriate tests to evaluate your risk or potential prevalence for cancer. Because early detection is going to be key to survival for many of these different types of cancer.